All right, so today we have a few sacroiliac joint fusions, and both of them are on patients that have long spinal fusions. And it's not unusual for years after a lumbar fusion that a patient can end up developing sacroiliitis. And here you see it right in through here. So the long fusion, you know, this one's L3 through the sacrum. He's had this for a number of years. Now this fellow, I believe, had a bone graft taken many, many years ago. Right, actually his bone graft is right, right there. It was harvested on his left side. So we're gonna do a left a left sacroiliac joint fusion. He's had two sets of diagnostic injections, which gave him excellent relief. But this is a kind of a long-term complication because they're very, very arthritic looking. Now, when I first started in spine surgery, the thought of, you know, a patient other than having an infection of the sacroiliac joint, having some kind of sacroiliac joint instability was almost unheard of or was it just wasn't accepted as a potential condition but now it is especially in patients that have had a lumbar fusion and we'll use navigation and put our implants across the sacroiliac joint